whoa, what's the mercy? <laughs> Good morning, Minneapolis. Welcome back. Thank you for stopping by. We're so grateful to have you here. I'm Tucson Morrison, your host of Good Morning Minneapolis, brought to you by a scrappy band of independent media folks at Onsite Public Media. Hey, let's get the damn thing started. Today, in obvious news, Dr. Doom, Dark Side, and Greg Abbott have a lot in common, but the one thing that they don't is Greg Abbott doesn't have a comic book. In our headline story today, the NAACP has filed a federal lawsuit against the Minneapolis Police Department and is suing the department for creating fake social media accounts to monitor the organization, as well as other leaders in the movement demanding justice for the police murder of George Floyd. NPR writes, Minneapolis NAACP leaders on Wednesday filed a federal lawsuit against the city of Minneapolis over police officers' alleged use of stealth social media accounts to keep tabs on and criticize black community leaders. Whoa, 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 whoa. It wasn't just the NAACP. They wrote black community leaders in there as well, so that's like everybody in the movement. We know how we are treated. We know how we are discarded. They have different weapons, but they use them all the same. Police have guns. Our mayor has press conferences to pacify you. Say his name! George Floyd! Y'all have waited a real long time to see some justice in this city, in this country, in this world. And today we have the chance in less than 10 minutes to see that. If you remember COINTELPRO, they infiltrated the Black Panther Party and destroyed the group by publicly humiliating them and falsely charging them with crimes, so this is nothing new. Yeah, sometimes it's a Russian spy or an out-of-country internet hook, but this call was coming from inside the building. So if you thought ops were at play, oh, they were officially at the playground in your comments all over your page. The MPD was there, probably still is. Hey you may want to do one of those cathartic social media purges and burn some internet sage all over that profile girl, okay? So you're telling me the MPD slid in the DMs, the comments, the everythings, how'd they find this out? Apparently, when the Minnesota Department of Human Rights conducted their investigation of the MPD, they found that the MPD was spying on members of the NAACP as well as many others, and it wasn't for any investigative endeavors. They were just there, keeping tabs, talking getting paid. Can you imagine the Minneapolis Police Department, like the think tank? They're sitting at a table after just murdering George Floyd, and then somebody pipes up and says, you know, I think we should create fake Instagram accounts, impersonate black people, and watch this thing get wild. Am I right, am I right? Oh, 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 they're like a bad ad agency. You know those ad agencies, just from watching their content, you know have no black people at the table? Yeah, like the Kendall Jenner Pepsi ad. The MPD would definitely think of something like that. Also, these federal charges have got to be on speed dial for the Minneapolis Police Department. Think of the federal agents that have 612 numbers in their phones now. Business idea, Minneapolis Airbnb for the feds. I'm gonna put out little handmade cards on the dinner table that says, Welcome back, girl. We knew it wouldn't be long. Feds are visiting Minneapolis so often, Delta started offering red-eye one-way flights from DC just to see what the traction will be. The feds are looking into the Minneapolis Police Department so often. You ever wonder why Minneapolis Police Chief Brian O'Hara wears his police cap so low? It's because he doesn't want you to see how high his eyebrows are. When the federal lawsuit was filed against MPD for pretending to be black people online and disrupt protesters, feds promptly responded, pretending to be other people? Uh, hey. That's our job. And speaking of people doing more than their job, former Minneapolis police officer Tu Tao has been convicted of aiding and abetting manslaughter in the police murder of George Floyd. The guilty verdict means that all four officers who participated in restraining Floyd have been convicted on both state and federal charges. CNN writes, like the bystanders, Tao could see Floyd's life slowly ebbing away as the restraint continued, Cahill wrote in the verdict. Yet Tao made a conscious decision to actively participate in Floyd's death. He held back the concerned bystanders and even prevented an off-duty Minneapolis firefighter from rendering the medical aid Floyd so desperately needed. You know, this reminds me that there's a song titled F the Police, but there is not a song titled F those first responders for a reason. It's wild to think that Tao was holding off someone from actually helping George Floyd. It's insanely sad, but it shouldn't be surprising since reports show when he was a rookie, a training officer cited him eight times for being dishonest or taking shortcuts. Over his career, he had six police conduct complaints filed against him. This guy was bad at his job. Mayor approved, but the mayor's bad at his job too, so he wouldn't know a bad cop if he saw one either. And for more context, look at this. In an article soon after Floyd was murdered, Unilad writes, Tao said his heart sank when he learned Floyd had died. That wasn't out of empathy. That was more a feeling when you're at the top of a ladder and you feel it wobbling beneath you. It's like an, oh shit, I'm going to fall off this ladder and go to prison feeling. Mayor approved, court convicted. Tao, signing off.
Speaking of long overdue, in a 71 to 59 vote, Minnesota lawmakers passed a recreational marijuana bill. The bill would allow adults 21 and older to buy, sell, and use marijuana. All this happened, but not before Minnesota State Senator Warren Limmer decided to show his full ass in public and say this. Two ounces, just two ounces is equivalent to three joints. Oh, Warren must be thinking people pull up to the dispensary and order the one ounce joint, like this one. Look, I don't know who Warren Limmer partied with back in the day is the end of that sentence. I don't think he's partied with anyone, to be honest. Warren Limmer's math on two ounces equals three joints actually checks out because it's the exact amount of misinformation somebody would need to vote against legalizing marijuana. I mean, three joints out of two ounces? Warren, are you trying to find a lethal amount? Warren Limmer, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who don't know, he's a senator, former corrections officer, was the author of the 2012 Minnesota Constitutional Amendment to Ban Gay Marriage, and mildly resembles Grand Moff Tarkin. You see it. You won't be able to decommit it from memory. You're welcome. J is for Justice is a new children's book written by Nakima Levy Armstrong and illustrated by Tiffany Baker. The story follows baby Joy who is walking with her mother when she begins to hear people marching, chanting, and protesting. The book teaches young readers the power of protest community and many voices coming together as one. Nakima, the author of the book said, I poured my heart into this book and I'm grateful to still be here to share it with you all and to help educate, uplift, and inspire children around the world to use their voices to stand up for what they believe in. And if you've had the fortune of meeting Nakima, hearing her speak or attending any protest that she's organized, you already know how immensely necessary and powerful a book like this is. You can order this book anywhere that sells books. That'll do it for us. Thank you so much for tuning in. This has been Good Morning Minneapolis. I'm your host, Toussaint Morrison, brought to you by Onsite Public Media. If you want to support shows like this, click the link below in the description. Hey, justice, then peace. Thanks for tuning in. Now you go and enjoy that one ounce joint. <laughs>